Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David, and perhaps you've watched one of those big name game shows on TV, those big, huge reality shows, those talent shows, and you've seen some pretty amazing magicians walk across that stage, and you thought to yourself, I wonder what it takes to be a stage magician. How do I get started in stage magic? That sounds like a great magic question. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. My name's David. I'm a magician, I'm a teacher, I'm a content creator, and what I do each and every single day is I upload videos about magic and playing cards so that you know exactly what's going on with the latest and the greatest. I try to give you all the information and I answer your questions. I answer your questions. I comment uh, down below every single time you comment. I comment back. I want to make sure that we're engaging. Uh, one of the things I want to do with my channel is not only create awareness, right, for magic, but I also want to create community. I want to create community. I want to help you guys get the answers that you're asking. So I've done a couple of these uh, questions, right, these magic questions, and they've always kind of focused around starting, right, starting in rope magic, starting in card magic, starting in coin magic. So. How do you get into stage magic? So I want to answer some questions, right? I definitely want to talk to you about what to, what to look for as far as learning stage magic. I want to talk to you about classics, right? Classic props in case, in case you're wondering like, you know, what should I buy? Maybe additional purchases too. I want to talk about building your own props. We'll talk about that and uh, yeah, let's go. So the first thing I'm going to ask is who are you? Who are you? I know. This is not the exciting part. You wanna jump right into tricks, but we kind of have to get this out of the way. What kind of magician are you going to be? The character that you portray on stage is a character that needs a personality, that needs a look, that needs a theme. And you have to think all those things through, okay? When you close your eyes, what do you picture? What do you look like? How are you moving around the stage? What's that? scene you're creating, okay? And then when you look out into the audience, what do they look like? Who are you performing for? Are you performing at a birthday party, a corporate event? Are you uh, in Vegas and you have your own show? Are you uh, performing for a private party? Someone's hired you. Uh, are the people out in your audience, are they retired? Are you on a cruise ship? Are they all young, okay? Who are you performing for? Because that's crucial also in picking your tricks and developing your pattern. And the venue that you're performing in, that also decides what kind of tricks you're getting. If you're doing smaller, more intimate private parties or a smaller stage or a parlor setting, then obviously your tricks can be a little smaller. If you're in Las Vegas or you have your own stage show, right, then your tricks get so much bigger. So you're thinking about all of that, all right? so. It's more than just tricks. I know we want to jump into tricks, but it's more than just tricks. Here's something else I would highly, very strongly recommend. Please go take a community acting class. I know, but if you're going to be on stage, if you're going to be in front of people, there's a lot of things you need to know about blocking, about projecting your voice, about where you stand, how you position yourself. You want to make sure that you're making eye contact with certain people so they feel engaged. And then also, you're gonna know how you feel when you stand in front of an audience. Do you get stage fright? I made a video about that. I made a video specifically about stage fright because it happens to all of us. So you need practice being in front of an audience. Now, if you're still in high school, then sign up for your drama class at high school, okay? Get in drama. Even if you know sports, sports is more your thing, take a semester of drama, okay? And if you're still in middle school, then just prepare that, hey, when I get to high school, I'm going to take a drama class because I want to improve my magic, all right? Um, there are books on acting, of course, but I would rather you take a community class. If you're going to read a book, I would read a book on stand-up comedy. There's some great books on stand-up comedy, both in writing jokes and then how to get gigs, how to perform, how to create a set. 
There's some wonderful books on stand-up comedy. Um, I'll throw a couple pictures of some of my favorites uh, into this so that you can see the books that I've read that I think are great. But if you're thinking about being a magician that's kind of funny, then of course you need jokes, you need humor, and you can't use the same junky jokes, right? The hack jokes that every magician uses. You can't say, uh, you know, can, I, can you hold out your hand? No, the clean one. All those jokes gotta go, okay? If you wanna stand out and be original, you're gonna have to create your own character with your own set and your own jokes. What kind of tricks? What kind of tricks? What kind of tricks? Still not getting into tricks. Still not getting into tricks. When you're thinking about your venue, okay? When you're thinking about the kind of character that you're gonna portray, now you have to kind of think about the tricks you'll perform. First of all, you need tricks people can see, <laughs> right? If you're in parlor or you're in stage, you need tricks that everybody can see. Not just the people in the front row, but the people in the back row as well. So you gotta think about the setting that you're gonna be in and then look at your props and say, can people see this, right? Now, admittedly, I've done card tricks in a parlor setting. And admittedly, not everybody can see the deck of cards. But here's the thing, I'll take the deck out I'll have somebody in the front row select a card. That person stands up and shows everyone the card. Now we all know. And then the trick shifts over to something that's a little larger, right? I only use the deck at the very beginning. So think about your venue. And let's say you've been asked to perform at a venue, okay? They say, hey, I want you to perform at the Elks Lodge. I want you to perform at our church. Please go there first and look at the area where you'll be performing. You don't wanna be surprised, okay? If somebody hires you for a birthday party, have them take a picture of the area that they would like you to perform in and send, it, send you a digital picture so that you know this is what I'm working with. You don't wanna show up and say, oh my gosh, it's so much bigger than I thought, or oh my gosh, it's so much smaller than I thought. Please go check it out. So, you need tricks that people can see. You also need tricks people can hear. Yeah, tricks people can hear. In other words, when you're figuring out where this venue is, you need to know, do you need a sound system? Do you need a microphone? Now, I've been to venues where they've said, oh yeah, we've got a microphone, don't worry. Great, I show up and the DJ or the sound guy hands me a handheld mic. I, I can't use a handheld mic because I need my hands to do magic. And they say, okay, we'll, we'll stick the microphone on a, on a mic stand. That doesn't work either because then I have to stand by the mic stand. I have to be able to move around. So not every venue has the same kind of sound system. So you should check out the sound system as well. If you're gonna be in a backyard, if you're gonna be in a birthday uh, living room, whatever, right? You kind of have to think about, are the people at this venue going to be able to hear my voice? If you've got a 20 minute set, and you're yelling through the whole 20 minute set so the people in the back can hear you, that's really gonna stress out your throat and by the end of the performance, your voice is gonna go more and more, okay? So um, having a portable sound system for yourself that you can bring with you that sits in your car is key, especially if you don't get a chance to check out the venue in advance. If you pull up to the church and they don't have any way of projecting your voice, you say that's okay, you run back out to your car, you get your portable speaker and your microphone, plug it in and you're good to go. You don't wanna be surprised and you don't wanna be unprepared, okay? You need tricks people can see and tricks people can hear. All right, so let's talk about tutorials. How can you learn stage magic? So these are books and DVDs for learning stage magic, okay? So not just tricks. Uh, the first one I would recommend is Jeff McBride. Jeff McBride, fantastic stage magician. He's got three DVDs, volumes one, two, and three. They're $23 a piece. Uh, these are great because it's Jeff McBride, so it's a name you can trust. And also, it's the topic that you wanna learn about, right, stage magic, and it's video, it's video. So these would be my top three recommendations. You're gonna get a lot of material and a lot of great advice from Jeff McBride's Magic on Stage, volumes one, two, and three. Second piece of advice, Mark Wilson's Complete Course in Magic. If you don't have this book, you need it because I pretty much recommend this book in every single one of my videos, whether it's card magic, parlor, kids magic, rope magic, math magic, whatever it is, this has a great beginner's section and that includes stage magic. Mark is a stage magician 
right? And so he's got a great chapter on stage magic and has a lot of great beginning level parlor and stage magic tricks that you can perform. Uh, the book's $25. I believe you can get it in hardback and paperback. So that should be in your collection no matter what. Um, there's other another two volume set. There's Pax Small Plays Massive, volume one and volume two by Jamie Allen and RSVP Magic. Now Pax Flat Plays Massive might be a little harder to find. I don't know if it's still in print. I believe it's $30, um, but great. Another great, great, great set. All right, let's talk about tricks. I know, you wanna talk about tricks. Uh, we're gonna talk about classics, all right? Because obviously there's a huge pile of parlor and stage magic out there, lots. So we gotta cover the classics. We gotta cover the ones that we think everyone should know, all right? Now, admittedly, when you watch through these, you're gonna say to yourself, these seem like the, the old tricks. Don't let that phase you, okay? And, and here's why. Just because you've seen them, and just because you know they're classics, doesn't mean anybody else has seen them. Most people, most people have not been exposed to magic, especially as much as you. And I would also argue, the people that watch you perform, you will probably be the first magician they've ever seen live. It's true. Most people have not seen live magic. They've only seen magic on TV. So any magic you do for them, they have no idea whether it's new and fresh or classic, okay? And like I was saying earlier, this is all about you and your personality. So you can take any classic trick and make it great. So let me give you my top 10. Linking rings, linking rings. Yeah, linking rings. So you want the nice big set, big set of eight. You want the, the ninja rings, the small rings. It's that, that's, you know, that's a classic, right? Gotta talk about linking rings. Linking rings are expensive. That's true, they are. And what you're gonna find is a lot of stage magic is expensive. Uh, number two, the egg bag, a little smaller. Uh, egg bag is a classic trick and works great for parlor and stage. So egg bag is a bag with egg and it vanishes, right? You can get a whole fun routine out of this. If you haven't seen an egg bag routine, go watch YouTube. Go watch somebody do it on YouTube, it's fun. Uh, we're gonna talk about rope magic because rope magic works great for parlor and stage. Uh, cut and restored rope, classic, right? If you've ever seen uh, Teller do cut and restored rope, it's amazing, okay? And with cut and restored rope, you're only learning how to do it, right? Because you're just using regular scissors and regular rope. So this is a trick that you can do for the rest of your life. Uh, and it's beautiful, it plays big, because everybody understands the properties of rope. No one's ever gonna think, that's trick rope, right? They know it's not trick rope. Um, Miser's Dream, again, great trick. Miser's Dream is the trick where coins appear out of nowhere and you throw them into the bucket. Um, I've seen Miser's Dream done for children at birthday parties. I've seen Miser's Dream done on the big stage. It plays in both arenas. That's how strong this trick is. If you can do this at a kid's party and in an arena, it's a great trick. Don't, don't rule out Miser's Dream. Uh, torn and Restored Newspaper. And along it's, you know, so torn and restored newspaper obviously is the newspaper, you tear it and then it restores itself. I would also add to that the milk pitcher in newspaper. Both of those tricks, right? And I've done both of them. Um, they're both gimmicks. They're usually things that you have to buy. Uh, the milk pitcher is you pour the milk into the newspaper, you fold it up and the milk has vanished. So learn both of those. Um, bill to lemon, right? A borrowed bill appears in a lemon. Borrowed bill appears in an orange. Those are classics. I would only use bill because those things can be done borrowed right? You're going to borrow a bill from the audience. Maybe they'll learn the serial number. It vanishes and appears over on a, in a bowl of fruit off stage, right? So that's a great trick. Color changing silk. This is an inexpensive trick. Very inexpensive trick and very easy to do, but plays for a large group. And it plays just like it sounds, right? It's one color and then it changes to another color. Uh, 20th century silks is another one that goes along with that. Um, the, the silk that goes through the person's body and it pulls out their clothes is a, another comedy effect, right? So there's, a, there's some silk effects that play on a larger scale. Uh, the six card repeat. You can do six card repeat with small cards or large cards. The trick is so, the, the trick is so big in scale that it plays, even if you use smaller cards, because you stand in front of the audience and you count them out like this, one, 
to, and they count six cards, right? And you throw three cards away, or you throw four cards away, and then you still have six. And you throw three cards away, and you still have six. It's a really old trick. I learned this when I was a kid. I used to make this trick out of a regular deck of cards. So this is a really fun trick. You should learn the six card, six card repeat. Uh, mouth coils, pulling mouth coils out. I, I saw, uh, this trick is so uh, good. It's, it's in Harry Potter. <laughs> Did you know, like, I think it's the second movie when they're walking through um, the dining room, a bunch of kids are doing different tricks and they're all like classic magic tricks. And one kid is literally doing mouth coils. So yeah, mouth coils is a lot of fun. And again, plays for parties, plays on big stage. Uh, any rope escape, okay? Uh, if you get the Carl Foles beginner's rope book, uh, you, there's some rope tricks in there and a rope escape and just have somebody tie you up with rope and you get out. And again, it's done with normal rope. It's a great trick. So that's 10, that's 10 classics, okay? But let me give you some more, okay? So that, those would be the 10 classics. Let me give you some extra ones. Uh, Professor's Nightmare. Professor's Nightmare, that's a trick you can look up for by name, okay? And again, it's a rope trick, it's a classic, um, but that's at least a title that you can go out and look for. Uh, the Magician's Insurance Policy. Uh, this is a great trick for parlor. Okay, and, and you can do this with jumbo cards if you wanted, or smaller. And you know what this is, right? They, they hold the magician's insurance policy, and then you do a card trick, and then you get it wrong, and then you go to the insurance policy, you open it up, and their card is right there. And sometimes that's also called like a, a flag reveal or a silk reveal, right? You have a large silk that opens up, or a large flag that opens up, and then the revelation is right there. Uh, oh, going back to rope magic, Daryl. Daryl has some great rope magic effects. So I would just throw out, if you search Daryl's name in any uh, magic search engine, okay, or magic store, look for Daryl, look for his rope effects. Any one of his rope effects would work great. Uh, most of them are probably parlor, but they work great. Um, stratosphere. Stratosphere, again, classic trick. Classic effect. And I'll show you a picture. You, you recognize this, right? It's a classic trick and it works. This is a great, great uh, stage effect. Um, the die box, okay, uh, show you a picture again. You've seen this box, right? The die slides back and forth. Um, it's a fun trick, classic trick. You can do this trick forever. Um, when I was going through my uh, research for this video, uh, someone had mentioned doing Bruce Kevlar's shrinking and growing head illusion. <laughs> and I had never heard of this, so I had to search for it on YouTube. Uh, it's hilarious, um, and it really doesn't require anything more than the the spinning hypnotic wheel. And it's really just kind of a gag, but uh, it's really funny. I'm sure the audience sees the illusion more than you do when you watch it on YouTube, but it's super simple and it might play well as a, as a humor thing. So I thought I'd throw that, throw that in there. And lastly, Floating Rose from Kevin James. Um, when you watch Champions of Magic, you watch World's Greatest Magic, I've seen lots of magicians do Floating Rose. Sometimes they do it with a real rose, sometimes they do it with um, Flash paper, right? The $38 effect, but it's a great way to do a floating trick. And for any magic that I didn't mention, I would head on over to creativemagic.net. creativemagic.net slash stage, okay? creativemagic.net slash stage. Uh, they have a huge page of affordable, very creative stage effects. Please go check them out as a resource. But what if you're the more build your own type? right? You want to build your own tricks. You're willing to put in some time. You're not necessarily interested in just like forking out up hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And you're not afraid of going to the, you know, going to the hardware store, getting some parts and building it yourself, especially if you want props that are larger, right? Uh, Andrew Main. Andrew Main is a name you need to know. Uh, it's, it's their older material, right? It's older instruction, but it's still classics. Um, I built the Andrew Main head twister a long time ago when I was a teenager. So uh, it's a bunch of inexpensive props that you can build on your own. Again, just search Andrew Main's name and you'll find some build your own props that are well within the reach of you uh, building yourself, but also will play to a much larger audience. Uh, PVC Pipe Illusions, this is the paperback book. Uh, June 24th came out in 2008 from Jim Garish. This is gonna be harder to find, I believe it's completely out of print. Uh, you might be able to find it on eBay. You might even be able to find it as a PDF on some magic library sites. PVC pipe illusions. So again, all his tricks are made out of PVC pipe. Okay, but that could be a great way to build some props, right? Because 
You can make some big boxes with PVC pipe. Uh, Victory Carton Illusions by Ulysses Frederick Grant. Okay, uh, you can download this book at Abbott Magic for about four bucks. But again, big huge illusions that you could build yourself. Um, a lot of them out of cardboard, right? Cardboard boxes. So another great resource for you. And like I said, it's four bucks. Four bucks, and you get some classic blueprints. And then lastly, um, another book that might be harder to find, 200 Magical Illusions by Nicholas Einhorn. So inside that, again, there's gonna be some classic stage tricks that you can build yourself. Wow, that was a lot. What do you go, 20 minutes, 20 minute video? Yeah, getting you, getting you all the information that I can. This is the best part of the video though. This is the best part because now is the opportunity for you. You probably had some ideas yourself while you were watching this. Either tricks that you could recommend, books, videos you could recommend, or even just advice for people wanting to start in stage magic. Hey, could you post a nice, polite comment down below? I'm sure we would all love to hear your advice as well. That's the great thing about the internet, the exchange of ideas. And of course, like I said, we're trying to build community, right? This is a brotherhood. This is a sisterhood. This is a family of magicians, okay? Hey, thanks for watching. Please be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the follow button. I'm gonna be giving away thousands of dollars of magic this year, 2022, giving away thousands of dollars worth of magic this holiday season. You don't wanna miss any of it. Get subscribed, start following me. Thanks for that question. Keep those questions coming. I'll try to answer them as I can. See you later, guys, bye.